Hello everyone, today we're going to learn about the Scene Manager class. Now I've created a tutorial before uh, called Scene Manager and a lot of people were upset because I was using application.loadLevel. However, I was doing that before Scene Manager was a thing in Unity. So I'm going to create this tutorial to sort of show you guys how to use the uh, Scene Manager class, which I suppose is the correct way to do it now. Uh, if you're using application.loadLevel, I think uh, it'll still run. You'll just get some compiler errors talking about deprecated classes and things like that. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about how we're going to do this. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is create a script. It doesn't really matter what you call it. Uh, I'm calling this one scene controller. The first thing you want to do is add this using statement unity engine dot scene management. Now we didn't have to do this before, but unity is requiring us to add this now. And the reason we need that is so we can use and access the scene manager class that Unity now gives us. So scene manager .load scene is essentially going to be the same function or provide the same functionality as application.loadLevel did a while back. And so we can just pass a string value, which I've declared up top as scene1. And now if we press, I haven't changed that yet, so let me change that from A to B. So now if we press A, we'll load scene one. However, if we press B, we should load scene two. Now let's talk about why I created this static variable very briefly. Uh, we have a static variable of the same type of our class known as instance. So we're going to be putting this script in, on an object and we want there to be only one scene controller. And anytime that is the case, we should make that variable static. So anytime you only want one of something, it's probably okay to make that variable static. Now in this awake function is a singleton pattern and what we're basically saying is if this scene controller does not exist we want to create it and make sure it doesn't get destroyed when we uh, switch scenes. However if a scene controller already exists then we'll go ahead and destroy the one that we're on. And that's all there is for the code. Let's go back to Unity and see what this actually does for us. Okay, now we're in scene one, and I'll go ahead and show you. I have two scenes, scene one and scene two. Notice that the string values from my script are exactly matching the scene names, and that's important. Uh, another important thing is make sure you go up to file and build settings, and make sure you're adding your scenes to your build settings, otherwise this code will not work. Okay, now the next thing we wanna do is create an empty object. I'll call this scene controller for consistency. And we'll put the scene controller script on that object. Now remember, this is going to be a persistent object. It's going to be the same object uh, from scene to scene. So we'll actually notice when we run the game that the scene controller is showing up in the don't destroy on load column. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and run the game. And we can see scene controller showing up and don't destroy on load. Now if I press B, we can see the sphere and we're now in scene two. I'll press A again and we go back to the cube. So that's all there is to it. Um, we learned how to use the scene manager and that's all we're gonna do in this tutorial. now. In the future, I'm going to create, possibly the near future, I'm going to create a tutorial that uses this class to add transitions between our scenes so that we're not uh, having that jumpy behavior going from scene to scene. We'll actually maybe have like a fade to black and then switch scenes, something like that. Uh, but I'll be covering that in a tutorial shortly. But that's going to do it for today. Hope you guys learned something. Uh, if you did, go ahead and drop a like. But I'll see you guys in the next tutorial and have a great day.